Thorchain just released a huge new feature called Streaming Swaps, and it's already live on the ThorSwap interface. So we're going to go over what Streaming Swaps are, why it matters to you, and exactly how to use it. For a more in-depth explanation, there's a great article on the ThorSwap Medium really getting into all of the details. I'll keep it short and sweet and just let you know what you need to know in this video. So the good old-fashioned regular ThorChain swaps are now called time-optimized swaps in the ThorSwap interface. This does what you're already familiar with if you've used ThorSwap in the past. But if you've ever tried to do a larger swap, you might have seen a slippage quote based on how much you're disrupting the pool that made the fees for the swap you wanted to do not very economical. And that's because the bigger the swap in relation to the pool, the more you're upsetting the balance of the two assets in the pool, therefore there's a higher fee. And there was always a strategy some people would do, which was breaking up their swaps manually into several smaller swaps. But the problem with that is then you have to pay gas every single time on the in and out because you're essentially just doing a bunch of swaps in a row. But with the new streaming swaps, which is shown as price optimized swaps in the ThorSwap interface, this allows you to trickle a swap into the pool over a longer period of time, longer for larger swaps and shorter for smaller swaps. But by trickling your large swap into the pool, you're disrupting it only a little bit at a time and arbitragers are coming in and recorrecting the pool price, leading to your total fee being significantly less in the end. And I'll show some examples in just a second. But with the streaming swap, you're not actually firing off all these individual transactions. You're just sending in once and ThorChain receives specific instructions that your swap is to be split up into however many smaller swaps over a set period of time and then it's all going to be sent out to you in the end so this lowers the overall fees for large swaps dramatically so let's jump back into the interface and let's mock some of these up so let's switch this around and see what it looks like to swap bitcoin to eth and these are of course native assets self-custody in your own wallet could be directly from your own ledger addresses so if we go ahead and mock up a relatively good size swap let's do 10 bitcoin that's about 298,000 us dollars at the time of this recording the expected output for that is a 159.6 eth but here's where it gets interesting is you'll now see there's two different options before you go ahead with this swap and you'll see the price optimized route or the time optimized route. So the time optimized route is the good old fashioned, what we've always had access to. And this relatively longer time is factoring in the outbound delay, but you can see that the time optimized is 15 hours faster than this large price optimized swap. But this price optimized swap is getting us 26K more than the time optimized. So a difference of 145 ETH out to 159 ETH. So that is a obviously massive difference and makes it incredibly competitive with centralized exchanges, especially as you get up into the larger amounts. So let's see what one Bitcoin would look like. There will still be a difference, but much less so. In this case, there's a time difference of only eight minutes, but and we're getting about 0.13 ETH, $250 more out by the price optimized swap. Now let's go crazy and see 100 Bitcoin, and this will be a huge difference, of course. Literally, this is kind of a silly example, but you're getting twice as much out because if you were doing a $3 million Bitcoin swap in one swap with the ThorChain pool, you're causing so much slippage that the fee is completely outrageous and not something you would ever logically do. But luckily, streaming swaps, price optimized swaps now make that possible, which is an incredible feature. And it's not just Bitcoin and ETH, just an example, but let's just real quick mock up a few others and then I'll do an actual live streaming swap. Let's do 100,000 USDC on ETH to Doge. So for 100K USDC, look at the difference in value, not a whole lot, very competitive with a centralized exchange. And you'll see it's about 30, 33% more Doge output by waiting the extra 16 hours and 20 minutes in this context. So it's of course up to you to determine, are you seeking time right now or are you seeking price right now? But to have this option for cases where you're not in a huge rush, obviously an incredible advantage. So let's get some wallets connected and run through an example. You can select by chain and see which wallets are compatible. In this case, I'm just gonna connect XDeFi, connect all chains. And in my wallet, I've got some native Bitcoin here. So let's go ahead and use that for an example streaming swap. Switch this around. Let's swap Bitcoin to some Avalanche chain USDC. I've got 0.029 Bitcoin here. I'm just gonna leave myself a little dust. And here's the quote. 
0.029 Bitcoin to 847 USDC on Avalanche chain. And here you've got the price optimized streaming swap or the regular time optimized swap. At this size of a swap and this particular pool, you can see I'm, I'm gaining $5.74 extra by waiting just about five minutes. So definitely not as huge of a difference as the larger swaps, but will totally work for an example. So let's go ahead and do this price optimized route. I will only need Bitcoin for the gas in. Everything else will be taken care of on the back end. Here's a breakdown of the fees and let's just confirm this swap see a breakdown price optimized swap streaming swaps are a new feature your swap is temporarily exposed in a limited way to market volatility i'll dig into this a little bit more after we go through the example but let's confirm and then we'll sign in our connected wallet just a little fee in bitcoin for the send in so we'll see the swap is going through there's the countdown timer as usual but what's new with the streaming swap is you'll see all of these blocks for the individual swaps that are going through in this case it's splitting it up into seven for a larger swap, it's going to split it up into currently as much as 99 different smaller transactions. And as those individual swaps complete, you'll see these blocks change color and fill until it's done. In the case of sending Bitcoin in first, this is a longer step just because Bitcoin is slow. So in this case, this step is kind of front loading some of the time. This is where the streaming swap will actually fill these up. And then the USDC is just sent out at the end. If I was going the other way around, this would be quicker to go in. And then on the way out, the Bitcoin would take longer because of course we're dealing with native assets. So that just depends on the chain we're using. So a couple of minutes later, the Bitcoin has gone in and the streaming swap is underway. The first sub swap of the seven sub swaps has completed. And now we're just gonna check these off until the swap is finished and the USDC is on its way out. As that's going, a couple things to be aware of. Because you're doing a swap over a longer period of time, that does mean you're exposed to potential price volatility of the assets changing in price while your streaming swap is underway. The other thing to be aware of is currently in this V1, there's not a way to cancel a streaming swap once underway. So if you initiated a very long, let's say 24 hour streaming swap, you cannot cancel that halfway through. It does sound like it's likely that ThorChain will add that at the ThorChain protocol level in the future, but currently in this V1, you cannot cancel a streaming swap once it's in flight. Also currently the maximum is up to 24 hours and up to 99 sub swaps. This could change over time and it will also likely be fully customizable within the ThorSwap interface. For starting out, ThorSwap is optimizing it based on the size of your swap and the liquidity pools that you're using to create the right amount of splits that make sense for the size of your swap. So we're at six out of seven of the sub swaps complete and there's the seventh. So the all seven has, have happened and now momentarily we should see the USD coming out like a normal swap and swaps done I actually beat the time by a good bit. I think I got lucky on my Bitcoin block times. This happened really fast, but let's take a look in our wallet and I've got my 846 USDC in my avalanche wallet. So overall, very easy to use streaming swaps, pretty much the same user flow as a normal swap. Just you have to be aware that it's going to take longer and it does have that risk of price volatility. So you're definitely going to want to give this feature a try. Also head over to the Medium article for a more in-depth dive. We'll definitely have that linked around this video. And definitely share this with potential users. This really opens up ThorChain and ThorSwap to a whole new wave of users by allowing large players to get really good price execution, competitive with centralized exchanges, but with all the luxury of your own self-custody wallets and actual decentralization. So that'll get you started. Go give streaming swaps a try over at app.thorswap.finance.